Let's go. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, we have uh, Giancarlo Orange, who's a general manager with uh, Vimu, um, who's here to kind of talk about how e-bikes can be fully leveraged for shared mobility, urban delivery, um, and, and, and other kind of shared platforms. And we're really lucky to have him here. He's a very experienced um, a professional in the industry, and, and we can't wait to kind of get his, his take on, on where e-bikes are going and, and where e-mopeds are going and, and how um, there's some sort of interaction with the, with the growing um, delivery, urban delivery space. So uh, we're, we're super excited to have you here. Thank you, Giancarlo. Um, to start, um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about Vimo and what specifically you do, um, and maybe even your kind of day-to-day -day, um, tasks that, that you handle? Okay. First of all, of all, I would like to thank you for having uh, us here and uh, for having organized this uh, this meeting. Uh, so I would like to say that everybody here already knows Vimo, but anyway, <laughs> I, will, I will say what we are and what we do. Our mission actually is to support transportation leaders to achieve sustainable, efficient and comfortable mobility experience. And to do that, we develop and uh, produce and provide full platform uh, integrated solution for sharing and delivery system. So we have a wide range of products such as bike fleets, um, uh, uh, sorry, I, I, Rex, uh, I forgot the, the English name, and uh, management platform and uh, user uh, app. Uh, we mainly focus on usability, feasibility, flexibility, and sustainability, uh, both for operators and citizen riders, in order to provide an enhanced mobility experience. At the moment, uh, we have uh, such important partners uh, in our portfolio, and uh, our solution has been adopted by both by sharing and last mile food delivery operator. Uh, in Europe, we work with such uh, realities like Void Technologies and uh, Gorillas, uh, and we are, pre we are present in uh, a lot of countries like uh, Denmark, England, uh, Netherlands, uh, and in the future in uh, Sweden, and of course uh, in Italy. Great, great. And um, so maybe jumping into the conversation, yeah. we've seen a lot about uh, of headlines around this this boom in, in e-bike sales um, over the past couple of years. Um, but most of the focus has been on, you know, individuals um, buying e-bikes for themselves, uh, whether it's to get to work or school, just for their daily needs. Um, but how has that sort of uh, customer demand translated to cities and, and sharing platforms uh, for Vimu? Uh, of course, the, the, the last period has been um, very strange because, of course, on one side, the pandemic situation has uh, accelerated the growth of this kind of services who has been considered uh, safer than public transport and so have been chosen uh, by most of people, even by the new user and new, and new riders for substitute the underground system or uh, buses uh, transportation. On the other side, of course, we, we know that in Europe, but, uh, we have a lot, a very long, uh, strong lockdown period. So people movements and the placement have been uh, restricted and even uh, forbidden in, uh, in many occasions. And uh, uh, till now, we are in a very peculiar and strange situation. It's difficult to understand how it's going to evolve. Uh, and uh, we don't, we have to also to remember that the shortage of the supply chain side has uh, been a, a big obstacle to deliver uh, vehicles uh, all over the Europe, the Europe because we face a very difficult uh, circumstances to obtain uh, parts and components, particularly electronic components. So in this very difficult and strange scenario, uh, figures t tell us that anyway, the utilization and the distribution of the uh, e-bike sharing system has improved a lot in Europe, even in, uh, in the last year. 
uh, if we take, for example, the um, distribution in the main uh, European cities, considering the, the most important cities like Paris, London, uh, Milan, and so on, we have a, a growth of uh, bicycle, bicycle uh, on the distributions on the sharing distribution system uh, that have been that reached the 25,000 units in Paris uh, most uh, mostly 20,000 in London and 15,000 in Milan with a, a very important growth even in the um, in this difficult period and the same growth we had in terms of uh, users and in terms of uh, uh, rights uh, even if we consider the difficult circumstances we have been uh, facing in, in, the, in this period. Finally, we can say that uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, trend, this kind of growth will continue in the, uh, in the next years, with, uh, even with uh, faster in the next year. And we think uh, that it will be not just uh, connected to the pandemic situation. We are quite sure that this kind of mobility, the sharing mobility, and particularly the e-bike sharing mobility, will become the standard mobility in uh, in our countries and in our in our cities and that means us to consider that the bike sharing uh, uh, revenues are projected to, to uh, exceed the, the seven million dollars in, uh, in in this year with a growth of uh, about 10 11 percent compared to the to the last year so i think uh, that uh, even the sharing mobility has been a very um, has faced a very important growth for uh, in the in these last years right it's been it's been quite robust and it, it'll be interesting to yeah. see how how those supply chain issues are are kind of ironed out even as demand continues to, to you know remain consistent and and but um i think you you've hit the nail on the head there's there's a lot of a there's a big runway for for this sort of demand um and and sort of another kind of headline news within the urban mobility um ecosystem has been this this really meteoric rise of instant commerce and, and quick food uh, and, and grocery delivery um, over the pandemic. Um, companies promising to deliver kind of the staples of your supermarket basket um, to your doorstep yeah. in 15 minutes or less. Yeah. And uh, a lot of these models have, have been, um, you know, uh, uh, have relied upon micromobility to make it possible to get all of those groceries to you in, in uh, efficiently as possible. Um, and so you mentioned you, you work with gorillas and, and maybe you have other yeah. instant commerce uh, platforms that you work with. Um, from your experience, what are kind of the specific needs uh, of these delivery operators in terms of e-bikes, um, kind of their day-to-day -day operations, maybe even software needs? What are you seeing from them? Yeah, uh, this is a very important question and a, and a very important issue. As you said, the, the new business model, I, I will say that uh, in my experience, the food delivery is a, a very important trend even before the, the pandemic. Of course, it was connected to a lifestyle quite different. So dinner between friends uh, or uh, watching a match on the, on the TV or something like that. With the pandemic situation, is has become something different. It's become something that has replaced the shopping that we've made by ourselves. So the time to deliver and the instant commerce has been growing very, very fast. And that means that uh, fastness and quickness in delivery is uh, strictly considered a quality uh, keep, keep indicators by the users uh, thinking about the, the operators. So this, uh, this already generated and will generate a, a, a passage from a uh, traditional bike to electric bike and uh, electric vehicles uh, uh, even uh, more uh, quick than uh, the bikes like mopeds or something like that because the uh, the quickness is the mo maybe the most important uh, success factor in this in this kind of business on the other side uh, always talking about the vehicles about product the strongness and the robustness of the vehicles are very very important and uh, you need solution technical solution mechanical solution a little bit different compared to the sharing uh, to the sharing a bike because of course the stress of utilization is completely different as com uh, completely stronger 
uh, more than this, you have to ensure your client uh, is easy, easy to maintain vehicles in terms of, uh, of course, the vehicles have to be uh, robust and, and strong, but it's impossible that they never break. So you have to be sure that the maintenance can be done easily and quickly. It's very important to have a proximity uh, after sales service to mm. to deliver spare parts in a very very uh, rapid uh, um, short time and you mentioned also the software uh, issues it is, uh, this is important because uh, the analytics and the data they need are quite different compared to the sharing operator because now it is important that uh, deliver operators can analyze the performance of the couple, let me say, by bicycle or vehicle and uh, a rider. Because this is a combined team that makes the, the delivers and uh, they have to understand how it works in uh, with the deeply analysis that are di different compared to the normal data you fill out from the sharing system. So uh, on one side is a, a proximity business, a similar business compared to the sharing one, but with specific needs uh, all over the, the platform. And in terms of growth, it's growing even quicker and faster than uh, than the sharing uh, the sharing system in, per, in a growth rate, of course, I'm talking. Right. And, and obviously, instant commerce is kind of going through a validation period. There's lots of money being thrown at it and um it, you know it might be kind of this this vc subsidization that we're seeing but i think um in sort of a general sense what's exciting is that instant commerce is kind of doing to goods movement what micro mobility did to people movement right it's it's right sizing the payload with you know how it's being yeah, used and yeah, yeah. making things more efficient in in that sense so you know the it should be ancient history, the days when we delivered a one kilogram burrito with a 2000 kilogram van. Like, you know, the, the economics of that doesn't really make sense in terms of also how inefficient a delivery van is in the urban space. So I think that's exactly. that's also why why. You know the, exactly. the inter interplay between micro and instant is really exciting. Yeah, and more than this, I think that it will be not uh, just be limited to the food delivery. I think that is right. uh, yeah. something that we will go farther than uh, than the online food delivery. It will right. be just in every little parcels the delivery. Right, like a, yes. the food is kind of that first ring yes. of, of the ladder, yeah. and and yeah. sort of yeah. the highest volume good that we get on a daily basis but you know it can extend to retail yeah. and fashion maybe fast fashion um so so yeah i think there's it's definitely just a, a jumping off point um but but you know we've i mentioned that there's kind of this validation period and people might be skeptical but um what what sort of regulations do you see happening in in 2022 for these delivery companies that might yeah. affect how they acquire vehicles from from you Mm, uh, f f first of all, I think that the regulation is going uh, in Europe uh, is going to regulate the relationship between uh, operators and the riders. And so we are going to well, every day we hear about integration uh, with the normal uh, work relationship, uh, employed uh, relationship. And that, of course, uh, means that the vehicles will be uh, more and more provided by the operators and so uh, they will be more and more uh, safe and uh, readable for uh, the riders because the, the health of the rider, the safety of the rider will be take, absolutely taken charge by the, by the operators. So that means brakes, that means uh, tires, that means a uh, uh, frame that will be uh, uh, able to sustain the safety of the uh, of the riders. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I think that the, 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 there will need be also regulation concerning the, uh, the viability and uh, the circulation of this kind of uh, vehicles, but yeah. uh, uh, to, to always for the safety of this kind of uh, guys running over uh, Running with uh, with this bicycle, uh, so uh, but I think uh, I agree. Your issue, we are in the first 
uh, stage of this um, of this business and of these activities i think there will be a normalization and re uh, regulation inter interventions uh, for uh, standardizing and uh, regulating uh, all that but i think once again and once more that that we became a constant and common part of our uh, lifestyle I think that we we will not get back when the pandemic time will be over. Yeah, yeah. Soon, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, and and so you talked about kind of making sure that the couriers are also safe on your vehicles, and I think this is kind of a a key point because instant commerce relies also on having this twenty four seven service, and, yeah. and that means having couriers staffed at all times you know it, it's not really possible for them to draw from gig economy or or kind of independent contractors in that sense so yeah. also making sure that with this shift in how labor is is being utilized also having sort of safety measures in place whether that's training or or on the hardware side uh, you know more advanced vehicles that that can keep them safe when when you know these these deliveries are being made so quickly so it's it's really great that you're also kind of taking into account the the shift in how labor is being used in this in this new model, um, and 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 that's really it, it's encouraging to see because um, those are things we want to change um, in in how things are done. So um, that that does bring us towards uh, to the end of of this conversation. But thank you all for for joining us. Uh, we're, we're super honored to have have Giancarlo here um, from all the way from Italy, which is quite late over there. Um, so we thank you for taking a bit of your time out of your evening to, to talk with us. Thanks again, John Carlos. And uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.